Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about AI. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, would you say that you find it alarming or exciting that a senior engineer at Google has claimed that the company's AI has become sentient? Uh, I would say that uh, this is one of those situations where like it's the it's the co-pilot uh, situation all over again. The people who know how well, I'm not gonna say because I have, I don't actually know if they're. I'm I'm assuming now because there's no branch of AI at this point that I know of that would be able to create a sentient life form. Uh, because when you understand how machine learning, for example, works, with the models that we have available today, you will understand that it's really just a series of array equations. That is what machine learning at the end of the day comes down to. It is basically a, like a, you have a set of filters where you pipe values into, and then on the out, and then you basically measure the change, like the the what is it called, the activation function. You measure the change and how accurate, uh, like how how depending on how you pipe the data through this. Uh, through the, through these filters, you measure how much of a difference it makes and how close you get to the end state or like the end goal, and that is sort of uh, like saying that, oh, I go here. I'll let me let me ask you this: Do you think that a mass array, an array of numbers, can be sentient? Well, it really depends. What do you mean by sentient? For all we know, this is exactly how humans work. We could all, in theory, just be a walking blob of um, biological uh, uh, arrays. That's what our brain could be. Depends on how you want to talk, uh, think about it. But uh, sentient in the sense that it has like an actual brain actually work? No. Because fundamentally, as I said, like there is no, like we don't even know what it is. What is sentience? What what does it mean to like you mean to have creative thought, to be able to reason and have a sense of self awareness or things like that? No. Because there is no, there is nothing in our technology today which can, as far as I know, represent that. And the thing that the Google engineer has claimed is either the words of someone who is uninformed, or an individual who has fallen victim to the mimicking game, which is that a piece of technology can mimic something so well that you, as the well, in this case, I'm not saying that the, this person is stupid, but the stupid quote-unquote human. This is sort of the plot in most of the, what is it, the film movie, Her? I haven't seen it, but like where, you know, humans attach emotion to things that they don't truly understand. And it's a very silly example, which I, I mean, I love it and everybody sort of loves it, but you know how... Uh, how the people who the content providers who film animals and then they put like human thoughts uh, bubbles and stuff like that that is what you're doing you are projecting based on your values your brain is projecting what you think the dog is thinking about the reality is that you have no fucking clue what the dog is thinking or feeling or anything like that it might not even be possible for this uh, for the dog or the cat or something like that to exp to feel the emotions that you are projecting onto it you are simply using your own interpretation of the universe and guesstimating what is happening in the other uh, in the animal this is exactly the plot which where we talk about how I mean you see that you've seen this phenomenon uh, in other places where people I don't know I've seen it in Japan like they marry their dating sim they literally do and so forth and so forth where humans have an ability to evolve emotion and thoughts and see as we like to say we are very good at seeing patterns and sometimes we, our brain is so hardwired into seeing patterns that we see it where none exist or oh, well everything's a pattern depending on how you define it but uh, that is what's probably happened. 
this is why I say that this is just I guess thought that this was silly. I'm assuming this is this is exactly how I felt when uh, the co-pilot or everybody was asking me about oh is co-pilot going to take over our jobs and I kind of went no nope. no it's not. AI is scary and mystical to people because they still think that AI, their version of AI is the Terminator movies. Like that's their version of AI. And if you know at least the basics, and I'm not a master of, me, of the AI um, field of study, uh, you would know that there is, like, fundamentally we don't know how to create a sentient being. But we do know how to pattern match that we are really good at at this point. We have really understood that part, which is like the vast majority of what people are doing when they use machine learning and AI. It is, as I said, it is down to one thing only, and that is that you have enormous amounts of data, and you pipe that through a series of matrices, create a data model, where if you pipe other data into that model, it will calculate how likely this thing ma or how much this thing matches something else. That is the heart and soul, the foundation of it all. And you could have done that, uh, you know, I mean, in a really silly world, you could have had a room of humans sit and calculate all that stuff. Would you say that the people, like the numbers that you're writing now, are the, are the, is this a sentient system? Probably not because our idea of sentience is a little bit different than what you might think. And the reason why this thing blows up is, of course, because media and the average human or the average person doesn't really understand what's going on. It's the same thing as, which is sort of... In, I mean, this I feel find to be a little bit forgivable because it's sort of... I wouldn't expect the average people to know how machine learning at its heart and soul works. But the... Like the when it happened with Copilot, I was like, "Are like this is sort of my this is the proof that I keep on seeing the average software developer is not good at software development, doesn't truly understand what it is that they do or how it's done." Um, and I keep, when I interview people, I keep on coming back to the same thing. Some like uh, maybe forty or thirty percent of the people that I interview are actually skilled software developers who underst really understand uh, like uh, how to work with computers and how technology works but the vast majority of people these are just people who took a well yeah, like it took a simple boot camp or something like that they learned the basics of the basics they know like it's it's a, it's a code monkey it's basically just an individual who knows how to type uh, characters in the right uh, sequence into a file and get like the right result, but they can't reason or think or do creative thinking uh, around technology and uh, like actually use those skills for something other than what they are told to do. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, no, I don't. I don't find it alarming or exciting that Google has a single has an engineer who claims that the, their AI is sentient because, as I said, the I don't know if the Google has some type of experimental AI going on, but if it's anything that is based on mainstream, or at least my knowledge of mainstream machine learning um, and the way we do AI at this point then no, there is no, then this person is either, as I said, either they, is this, they are misquoted for, f for effect by media, because media uh, loves to, see, to freak people out with stuff like this, because this would be a big freak out, sort of like how they love to, I don't know, pandemics, wars, um, the economy, anything that can create mass hysteria the media absolutely loves. And of course AI becoming sentient and taking over the world, or black holes being opened, etc, uh, etc. Et All of this stuff sounds scary, interesting and alarming to a lot of people, so they're going to take it and run with it as much as humanly possible. For all we know, this engineer said something at one point and did it just as a joke or in passing. We don't... I, I don't care. I really don't care because that is the one version of it. The other version is that this person, as I said, has been... Uh, who has fe fell for the same thing that most people do. Uh, and that is the imitation problem. And that is that when you imitate something so well, you can make a human believe that it is real.
that it is something that it is not because humans who are who lose their objective thinking or don't truly understand what's going on are going to be persuaded emotionally that something is something that it's not and you can train a, an AI today that is really really like scarily good at replying to information or like you can have a chat a conversation with it etc etc because you can if you, if you can predict all the likely or possible combinations of things someone could ask or want to know from the AI you can make it respond to quite a lot of stuff because you have that amount of data we have hundreds of billions it's hexabytes of information on the internet guys you're going to be able to do it but if you've ever tried and I suggest that you do go and try to t take a talk with one of those chatbots and ask them something that you know nobody probably ever asked before and see how well they do I promise you they're I can basically promise you they're going to fail because at the end of the day the AIs of today the machine learning algorithms that we are using it is a gigantic math equation that is what it is it is not a sentient being you're dealing with you are storing basically uh, it's basically in your algebra you have tons and tons of uh, uh, matrices with numbers and you pipe data points through those matrices and do pattern matching that is the it's a very simplified version of what it is but it is the essence of what it is have a great day